So yeah, he's going to throw down so many factories, get out so many Goliaths to deal with this. And a Stork could be waiting a little bit too long to utilize these carriers. I think he's trying to utilize the element of surprise, but there's absolutely no surprise for Flash. He's scanned that at least twice by now. Okay, a couple of carriers out, but four Stargates pumping those carriers. So if Stork keeps up his upgrades, he's going to be able to overwhelm Flash. Flash still not doing anything about that 10 o'clock base, so I don't think he knows about that at all. Hidden Ninja Expo. I love Ninja Expos. But another factory coming out for Flash. A huge army moving out for Flash. This is a massive army. And he might be able to catch Stork with his pants down before he can get out enough carriers to really make the difference. And Stork, he scouted this with his observer, so he, at least he knows this. Uh, Flash is coming his way. Flash trying to head off these troops from Stork. If he boxes Stork in, he's going to be able to drill through that with siege tanks. Not to mention a huge Goliath troop that can deal with the carriers still. Oh, man, Stork is biding his time, waiting for the right opportunity to strike with these carriers. He doesn't want to lose all of his interceptors to these Goliaths. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he knows about the Goliaths by now. He has his, had his observers in the area. Oh man, the carriers are moving out. Stork, oh man, since Flash was going for his natural, he's going for the counterattack, but he's going to have to fight through a huge wall, and Flash deciding to fall back with most of his troops. He has some troops left at the natural to do some damage, but Stork might be able to fend that off with his carriers. Coming in with a shuttle, but it looks like the shuttle is going to be picked off by the Goliaths. And the carriers t taking care of the troop from Flash. Stork moving in to the natural area, but Flash, he has so many troops rolling in, so many tanks. Uh, his pretty much three-fourths of his army has, has not met Stork yet, so Stork could be boxing himself into a corner. Stork could be completely fried here by siege tanks. So the tank's sieging up, and it looks like Stork deciding to back off. That's a smart thing to do. He would have been completely creamed if he had stayed in that area next to Flash's natural expansion. Okay, Flash is still economically behind. Well, Stork took the 2 o'clock base as well, so some huge macro game from Stork coming in with all of his Dragoons to pick off the Goliaths. That is his main goal, to pick off these Goliaths to keep the Interceptors from going down. Uh, so I think he lost most of his Dragoons in that attack, but yeah, now he can come in with so many carriers. Picking off the Goliaths one by one. Stork fighting Flash back, but Flash has done a great job keeping up the troop count so far in this game. And he ha he's had some smart thinking with that block next to his natural as well. So Flash is definitely not out of this game yet. He's being heavily out macroed. And uh, if he doesn't get another base, it at least doesn't cause some economic damage to Stork. He's going to be completely whittled down as far as troop count goes as well. Oh man, even more Goliaths coming out for Flash. Looks like Stork has kind of cut his carrier production right now just to get up extra bases. He'll be going back with that High Templar from Stork. So many High Templar in the area. This is going to be a massive storm over all the Goliaths. So many Goliaths coming out for Flash. So Flash could definitely take this game back with the right Goliath micro. Stork coming in. He doesn't have any Dragoons left, so Stork is kind of running low on troops. Uh, he's utilized most of his time and minerals to putting up bases, so he's going to get a ton of Dragoons out soon, but it might not be in time. Flash picking off the Interceptor count. So many Goliaths in here picking off the Interceptor count, and here come the backup Goliaths. So Stork in a pretty bad position with his carriers. Yeah, he's going to have to utilize, utilize those storms soon enough. But yeah, he's falling back for the meantime, falling back with his carrier troop. Coming in with some more Dragoons. He's waiting for a bigger Dragoon army. But uh, Stork, Stork moving in with his High Templar storming over everything. So many storms from Stork over the entire tank line. There's still quite a few Goliaths in the area, but now Stork has so many Dragoons. He's able to keep up a huge Dragoon production. I'm sure he has a ton of gateways placed inside of his main and probably other places as well. So yes, oh, Flash slowly but surely losing it. The Dark Templar, Ninja Dark Templar in the area to pick off what Flash has. Flash being completely stomped. GG from Flash. Oh, an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. And Stork takes it with his excellent, excellent legendary Protoss versus Terran play. Such a great display of Protoss versus Terran. That is why Stork is the legend. Oh, st oh Stork. Uh, it's got to make you warm and fuzzy inside. No matter how far up in the tournament Stork gets, there will never be another player like Stork. I'm telling you that right now.
So yes, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, these two guys, how they play in their next respective games in the OSL. But that was a fantastic game from these two. Well, Bork Power, everyone. Bork Power. This has been Nuke. I am happy. And I will be back soon for more OSL matchups. Thank you.